Hey, how you doing friends? It's Kaiju Kid back for part four of my series how to make a movie in Little Big Planet. This is the fourth and final installment. Today we are going to finish our movie. I'm just gonna recap everything we've done so far. I'm gonna give some suggestions, some tips, some techniques, and we're gonna wrap it up. And hopefully by the end of this uh, whole series you will know how to make a movie in Little Big Planet and let's get started all right so in part three we left off I showed you how to use cameras on the sequencer sound effects music boxes and how uh, these magic mouths work with the sackbots and how sackbots act. So, having shown you all that, I've went ahead and made more of the movie. Well, I've made all the rest of the movie, honestly. And I didn't show that to you because obviously it would be a tedious video of just watching me make the rest of the sets. You've already seen me make one so I didn't want to show you making the rest but <clears throat> essentially I've made one, two, three, four, and five sets. So I've made four more sets since we've been gone. And I just want to show you what the sequencer looks like now. Uh, it looks pretty damn crowded. <laughs> and it looks huge, and there's tons of stuff on it. But if you really look at it, it's just the same stuff that I showed you in the little portion in part three. It's just camera, transitioning to camera, and then you got your little magic mouse so that your characters are speaking their dialogue. We got random sound effects and you just put them where you want them to sound off. And then we've got our batteries which are doing various things but mostly they're setting off our Sackbot's acting chips. Now you'll notice that I'm going to open up my Sackbot's here and see they've got their different acting chips going so that they can act their, their parts and some of these like this one down here has quite a bit of acting chips going on there you go, let me open it up see he's got one, two, three, four and she's got a whole lot because <laughs> she has a lot of scenes in this movie so just to recap from part three you live you leave this main chip in idle that's the very first chip that you see when you open up the circuit board and then all these other ones are different um, scenes where they're acting so every time you want your sack bot to act, you have to pull up a chip and you do a little acting routine and then you activate it with a battery. And that's what's going on there. Okay, also in part three I mentioned, or maybe in part two when I was building a set, uh, I kind of gave the advice to just use maybe four or five materials for all the sets. And then later, we could go back and change them. So that's what I did. I used felt for most of these. And, and just a couple of different, like I used wood and brick. But see, I've already finished my movie. I've used all the sack bots I'm going to use. I used all the dialogue and, and whatnot that I'm going to use. And look at my thermo over here. The thermo measures how much you can add to your level there to the left and I still have quite a bit left so 
what I can do now is I can go back and change some of those materials if I want. And I'm going to do that right now. Um, I think this one's fine. But there were a few down here that I did want to change. I think this one's okay. Um, maybe here. I think this wall looks too bland. It's supposed to be a wedding. Let's make that back wall a little fancier. What do you guys think? Let's take a look here. La -da -dee, la -da -da. Let's see here. How about... Hmm. Hmm. How about this one here? That looks kind of fancy. Yeah, that looks cool. I like that. Might be something you see at a wedding reception, right? It looks a lot better than that other one that was there. And I still got a lot of thermo to play with. This is supposed to be a ghetto version of uh, Disneyland. I didn't want to put Disney in there because, you know, in Little Big Planet, you get copyright infringement strikes so I just avoided all that and I named this guy Mucky Mouse instead of Mickey Mouse in case uh, you're wondering when you watch it I, it's, I didn't misspell it that was intentional let's see here I think there's a cool grass material here how about one of these here this might be good yeah, there we go. Much better. That looks a little more magical, like Disneyland. And how about we change this brick to cobblestone? That'll look much better. There we are. Maybe this one here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm feeling it now. That looks real good, huh? You're like, uh, it doesn't look that great. Also, since I have thermo, I can go in and use more decorations to spruce up these sets here. Uh, let me put some vines on there. This little arch thingy here. Come on. Okay. I don't even know that you'll see that, but oh well. Alright, we're looking good over here. If you've never been to Disneyland, you're missing out. I highly recommend it. At least once in your lifetime. Because it is awesome! Just never can have enough greenery, I say. Alright. Not bad. Oh, hold on. Let's see if we... That's supposed to be, uh... A little water pool back there. Let's put a statue in there. Out of the way, Mickey. So I have some thermal left. So I was just going to say, if you had gone with recorded voice as opposed to speech bubbles on these magic mouths, I probably would have used more thermal on there. Uh, you have that option. And if you don't know how to record voice, you just click on the magic mouth there with square. And right here under speech, you can have gibberish which is just that mumbly voice that it makes while it's showing your speech bubble. Or you could have recorded voice. Now, if you want recorded voice, you have to have a mic that works with your PlayStation. And you just speak your lines through the mic, and it records it. When you, when you hit that little microphone, it counts down 
three, two, one, then you speak your lines and then you hit uh, the, the O button and it stops and it plays back whatever lines you said. And it works just like the speech bubbles. You, you have to name the magic mouth with your Sackbot's name for it to come out of the Sackbot. So this one says News Dude on it. So if I had recorded voice in this magic mouth and I named it News Dude, it would come out of my little News Dude down here. Except instead of seeing a speech bubble above his head with text, he would just simply mouth it. You would hear your voice coming out of his mouth and his mouth would move. Um, a lot of people like doing recorded voice versus speech bubbles. It makes it more, you know, movie-like and it, it sounds neater and stuff. The only reason why I don't do it is... Um, it's very time consuming. It takes up more thermo. And if you don't have a good microphone, the results can be terrible. Like I've seen a lot of people that insist on doing, uh, you know, recorded voice for their movies and their mic is terrible. And you can't even understand what they're saying half of the time. Um, me myself, I don't have a very good mic. It's, it's average. I've gotten some good results out of it in some of my movies, but Frankly, I just think it's easier to use speech bubbles and use the gibberish option, which to me it's just as funny. You know, I just make silly movies anyway. It's not like I'm trying to make a professional movie. But that's just something to keep in mind. Um, it will eat up some of your thermo, and if you're trying to conserve thermo, go with speech bubbles instead. That's what I do. What we need to do now is. Our movie's all made. There's all the cameras, all our music boxes, and whatnot. This right here is the last scene where the game is going to end. So we need to make a, a decision how we're going to go about ending our movie level. The way I do it is I get this world tweaker right here under your world tweaker section. And you choose the game ender. And you put it right at the end of your last camera, last scene. Right there. You don't want to put it over here because if you do, uh, it's not going to end in time. You want it to end while it's still, while the camera is still active. If you put it after the camera, then it's just abrupt and it doesn't work out great. So you want to put it there. Now, if you wanted the player to be able to interact after they watch your whole movie, like maybe you have like a little lobby or something down here by the entrance. Uh, like say right here, you could, you could have built like a little playable section right here that you want people to jump around and after they watch your whole movie you can do that but if you do that you don't use that game ender you're gonna have to use a standard and gold goal oh where is it you'll have to use one of these and end it like a regular level our movie is done, all our sets are built, all our cameras are down, we got our game ender on there to end the movie. One last thing I need to tell you is when you're going to save your movie, be sure to start the sequencer already with a start line at the very beginning of the sequencer like that. Then you save. And you're good to go. Now the reason why you want to do that is because when the player plays your level, the movie starts automatically with no lag, zero interruption. The movie just plays. Um, I guess now I'm going to show you a little bit of the movie just so you see how much 
the movie progressed. I want to stress also that I've only made five sets, and yet I've managed to make a long movie. And at least to me, it's entertaining. And that's something that I think is important. You don't have to go overboard with making tons of sets and making all, you know, thinking that you have to go all out and make a, a, a ton of different scenes and all that. You can make an entertaining movie with the budget you're given on your thermo there. You just have to be smart about it. You have to just think of a theme that you think is funny. And it, it can just be a few scenes. What really makes a good movie is the dialogue. All right, so see, there was a lot of interaction in there, and it all just took place between two sets. That's what I'm talking about. If you just get creative with your dialogue, you can really accomplish a lot with very little, honestly. So I didn't show you the whole movie. The movie's actually a lot longer. Um, that was basically just this first act that takes place between these two scenes here. And then there's a little more that goes on with these three other scenes over here. But I'll just leave that for you to watch on Little Big Planet. And everything's ready to go. One last thing. You want to minimize the sequencer by hitting L1. Or actually, R1. And your sequencer goes away. You just want to do that so that there's less stress on the level and that the movie plays nice and smoothly. 
if you needed to come back out you just hit uh, R1 again and it pops right back out that's it folks that's how you make a movie uh, if you found this tutorial series helpful please let me know let me know any concerns if you have any more questions leave them in the comments below uh, I would love to hear from you and if you want to see a tutorial on maybe something I didn't cover about movies or anything really in Little Big Planet, drop me a line and I will get back to you. If you want to help me out, please subscribe to my channel. It's free, doesn't cost anything. It makes me look good, makes me feel good. And uh, if you want to go an extra step, like the video as well. And check back regularly and hopefully I'll have some more videos on here if you guys enjoy this and I get enough feedback saying that I should continue to then I will all right enough of that jibber jabber I'm kaiju kid and I will see you guys later take care <laughs>